I've made in Minecraft. It is of course the Step Pyramid of Joseph Complex. It includes the first ever pyramid known in existence, but it is still not the smallest. I'll be talking about how the pyramids were originally created, what it meant for the Egyptians, and I'll also give a tour of the Great Complex. Overall, the complex I've made might look small, but it isn't. My scale is one block equals four meters, and overall, the whole complex is a whopping 277 by 544 meters. The complex was made between 2649 BC to 2575 BC, and then the 10 meter high wall enclosed enclosed 15 hectares of land. No, this whole complex took me 19 hours and it is not surprising that it took 30 to 50 years to make in ancient Egyptian times. Now for a brief history on Joseph. Jos Joseph was a pharaoh who ruled the third dynasty. His mother Nemetha and his father Kasekomui, they weren't as famous as Joseph, but they still did quite a, achieve quite a bit. Joseph wasn't his only name. His Hellenized name was Tasotros and Sesostos in many inscriptions. Tasotos. In many inscriptions, his name Net Jericho, which means the divine body, and his name can also be pronounced as Zoza and Jesse. He was one of Egypt's first pharaohs and is renowned for his architectural achievements using stone. Joseph is still considered great because he is in charge of making the pyramids, which today are one of the most important world heritage sites. He had one sibling named Senakt, a wife named Hetabernebdi, and together they had a child named Inet Case, who later became the princess of Egypt. taking a tour around the complex in an anti-clockwise anti direction. direction. The complex had a deep trench surrounding the entrances to keep thieves out and to make it worse, there are 13 artificial entrances and only one real entrance. As we enter through the southeast gate, there is an entrance colonnade trailing west, but we are turning right to reach part of the Hebstead Court. Joseph is thought to be the one who created this style of columns through the walkway. There are 10 chapels in this small area and all of them are dummies to full trespassers. They are very simple with no hieroglyphs and plain inside. Hebshead is a ceremony that is taking place after the pharaoh's death and celebrates the continuity of his time as pharaoh. Ancient Egyptians believed this so the pharaohs could still rule his or her servants and would be successful in the journey to reincarnation. Next, we will enter the South House. The South House and North House are both mysterious areas of the complex. We are still unsure what their actual names are and what their purpose was in ancient Egyptian times. This is a recess. It is, it is a cavity made in the wall for design and unusually, Egyptologists found something very interesting in these areas. The South House has one recess with a lotus shaped picture carved in it which is believed to represent Upper Egypt and the South House is also designed like the earlier shrines of Nekbet, the vulture goddess. Next to this is the North House and this is in fact with three recesses right there. But this one has carved papyrus symbols which do indeed represent Lower Egypt. So it is opposite. The North represents Lower and the south represents upper. The north house is believed to be made as the national shrine of Uto, the snake god. As we look on our left, there is a small door taking us underground. This actually takes us to the Sirdab. Sirdab means a cellar in Arabic and this is one actually held a life-size statue of Joseph himself. It was sealed with only two small holes in front so Joseph could see his worshipping table receiving offerings. But I made it with glass so you can see how the statue was presented in the Sirdab. Let's go back up and follow. 
This large cavity in the ground is the North Court and is also known as the ramp due to its appearance. It is unknown what it is used for but there is an altar at the end of it and is believed to be used in other ceremonial services. Next, this is the Western Terrace, also known as the Magazines. The Pharaoh would hold festivals while he was alive to engage powers that he would use for eternity even after de death. It was usually Hebset. And finally, we have reached the South Tomb, which is placed in the Great Court. The chapel of the South Tomb was in fact where the religious practices commenced. There are the books of the beliefs and you can also enter the South Tomb from this area. The South Tomb has a mastaba on top, which is practically empty. In case you didn't know what a mastaba is, a mastaba is a step and the word is still used in many countries today. The mastaba is most likely the design since it is surrounded by cobra statues known as Ure, but we cannot rule out any possibilities and it is still remains a mystery. In the sad tomb, there is a corridor that slopes down to a beautiful pink granite vault which is covered with blue tiles representing the palace of Josa and there are three panels showing Josa performing Hebsed rituals. The sad tomb was originally thought to be a burial site but it is much too small to put a body into. There is also evidence that the sad tomb was finished before the pyramid itself because the tile representations are more complete than the pyramid ones. Out we go onto the great court. From here, you can enter the pyramid and there is an altar to put curses over the pyramid for it and Joseph's protection. It is the same size as the other altar, but it's different in use. There are also boundary stones that have been placed in the Great Court to represent Upper and Lower Egypt. They are purely aligned and it, is also, and it also represents the peace between Egypt. The last significant thing is in the complex is an unusual wall that separates the magazines from the Great Court. It is named the Cobra War. It is covered with many hieroglyphs, but many of them have faded due to age and is almost unreadable. And the moment you have been waiting for, the Step Pyramid of Josa. I have made the Step Pyramid in its original state and it stands at 120. 5.27 by 109.12 by 63 meters. As you can see, it takes up most of the complex and is obviously the breathtaking scene that takes your attention. It is very interesting how pyramids came into place. Pharaohs before Joseph that died would be buried in a mastaba. It would be the exact same rituals like sacrificing their servants and ceremonial burying, but just in a smaller place. It is very interesting how pyramids came into place. This very complex was in fact a grain field that Joseph had created to feed his villagers. All the tombs and traps were all grain transportation fields and altered after Joseph's death to bury him. There was originally nothing over the field but they added a square mastaba after Joseph's death and two extra mastabas on top of each other so Joseph could climb up the stairs after his death and reach the sun to start his journey of reincarnation. After some of Joseph's family members died, more mastabas were added to the pyramid and this created a pyramid. And the creator of the pyramid was not Joseph but architect Imhontep who was the chancellor of Joseph and the high priest of Ra. He is given credit to start the making of pyramids and Pharaoh's loved these ideas so much they continued the trend of pyramid making for many dynasties. Now let's go inside the pyramid itself. As you can see above it is a towering and Remember, this is just a quarter of the size, and inside it looks cramped all of a sudden, but it is not. It seems this way because the traps and maze-like tomb has started, and this is just the start of a torturous journey to find Joseph and his gold. To keep it easy and that we don't get lost, I have kept the right doors open and it will be much easier to find our way to Joseph. As you can see, there are always multiple doors you can choose from, and if you get even one wrong, that will be the end of you. Once you enter, all the doors will look the same, but at most of the pathways there will be traps programmed to sacrifice intruders. One of the most common one is the sudden drop. If you survive the drop, you would die of hunger as there is no way out. Some of the traps consisted of alluring you by showing you God, but you would die before you reached it. The ancient Egyptians were very smart and made sure their rulers were safe at all times, even after death. It's very mysterious though. A 3.5 ton stone was put on top of Joseph's tomb so no one could enter it and steal the jewels. But when we discovered it, all was left out was his left foot and practically nothing else. I have kept it at its original state and if he was buried recently. So everything is still there like the jewels and food that were buried with him. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it and now you know how the pyramids were made.